And I love you, random citizen. I heard you. Hey, let's give it up for Thomas and best friends. Give it up for them. Hey, they do a great job of leading us in worship at a time. Every night is so consistent. They're awesome. So you see them, pat them on the back, say thank you. All right. Are the cameras rolling, guys, back there? And we're being videoed right now. I'm on the screens right now. Okay, this is going to stay on YouTube forever. So I wanted this to be said, to be recorded for all time. At this moment in time, right now, I am more tan than Josh Stevens. Until he goes on his vacation and he's going to be more tender than me. Anyway, so, all right. Hey, I want you to get to know me a little bit, the real me. So I kind of wanted to share some things I've been into lately. Is that cool? Yeah. I, even if it wasn't, I'm going to do it anyway. All right, so first, number one, I'm a big movie guy. I love movies. <laughs> and this little movie... Thank you. All right. This little movie. Do you want to talk? So this little movie premiered on April 27th. I've seen it three times. Uh, every time my mind is blown. Um, anyone here not seen it? I'm about to spoil it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Hey, listen. Hey, listen real quick. I can't wait for next year for an, uh, Avengers 4. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, from some of the things I've read and some pictures I've seen, it's going to be incredible. So anyway, I'm a big movie guy. I love movies. I'm also a bit of a video game nerd as well, um, to be honest. You PUBG guys need to be quiet for a minute, okay? Um, listen, the adult is talking. So, all right, so this is an actual screenshot. Can you put it back up, guys? Oh, hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right. That's, that's me, guys. That's me playing the game. Thank you. If you notice, I, do, I just took care of someone who was hiding behind the tree. And went to go get their sweet loot. And as I was getting it, someone else got me. So anyway, but I was really proud of that moment in time for Fortnite. Okay, sir, we'll talk later. All right, so um, something else. I just got back from vacation. I am starting to get my land legs back, so I feel better. So thank you for asking. I'm not swaying as much tonight. So here we go. All right, I want to show you one picture from my vacation. I know that's kind of lame. I don't care. Um, one picture from my vacation. And go ahead and put it up. Yes, that's my beautiful wife, Tammy. Listen, hold on. Shh. Let me explain. We were in Honduras. And we went to this. Yay, the people from Honduras. All right, but anyway. We went to a zip lining place. And they had a, an evil petting zoo. No, just a regular petting zoo, right? And they, were, uh, they had some animals there. I don't know if you can see. That's a little sloth, a baby sloth. And we got to hang out and pet little baby sloths and it was awesome and they're wonderful and they're soft and they're cuddly and yes I love them so much so um, that's that's kind of me that's who I am I'm just I'm just a guy standing in front of an audience and I want to talk to you about something that I think is so important it's about how Jesus has invited all of us to follow him and, and, and I'm so honored to be up here talking to you about it so tonight we're gonna just uh, paying with a few scriptures, we're going to talk about it, and I hope you're blessed. Not because of anything that I say, but that the Holy Spirit is working in this room, and your mind and your heart is affected by the power of God's Word. That's what I want tonight. So let's look at the first scripture tonight. It comes from Mark chapter 1, verse 16. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you, uh, excuse me, come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. There's so much going on in these verses right here. In fact, to really talk about them, 
We've, we've got to unpack it a lot. And I'm going to have to use a word that's probably a dirty word for most of you. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and say this, okay? And some of the people are like, what is he going to say? We're going to have to talk about school for a minute, okay? So, just, I know. Bear with me, you've got two more months. Hey, let's, let's think about this, all right? So, the disciples were out, they were out fishing, Okay? They were, they were guys earning, earning an, an, an honest day's wage. They're out there, they're fishing. Why were they fishing? Why? Well, this is what happened. Little Jewish boys and girls, like you and I, went to elementary school. Okay? Hang with me. They went to elementary school. Who in here went to elementary school? You passed the test. Good job. All right, so listen. At their elementary school, at their little kid's school, they learned stuff about the Torah, the Old Testament uh, the, the Jewish Bible. And in fact, they memorized big parts of that Bible. In fact, some of those little kids memorized the whole Old Testament. Can you imagine that? Little kids. They memorized the whole, the entire Old Testament, some of them would. And about the time they were 12 or 13, they came of age. And they were considered a, 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 an adult at that point. Have you ever heard of a bar mitzvah? There you go. That's the time that they came of age, and they became a young man or a young woman. So at 12 or 13, they would have an awesome party. They would have their first Passover. They would recite some verses, and they were considered a young man or a young woman. They were done with school, essentially, at 12 or 13. Would that be awesome? Okay. So here's what happened. At 12 or 13, something would happen. Most of those kids would go, and they would learn a trade. And I just swayed a little bit there, so sorry. Most of the kids would go and learn a trade. Or they'd go work at home. But the best of the best, the kids who really could memorize things well, guess what? They got to go to secondary school. They were the cream of the crop. They were the Troy Boltons. Yes. Think about that, all right? They were the Troy Boltons of Hebrew school. But anyway, um... So as other people over here, they're learning a trade, like fishing. The people who couldn't cut it, right? They, nah, they just didn't have it. It. The people who did, the Troy Boltons, they would stay with it. And they would study even more. It would be a more intense training. And they would learn more about the Torah. And they would learn how to recite different things. And they would learn more and more and more and more until... They hit a wall, and they kind of got asked to leave school. And that time, uh, you see, they'd go and they'd start their trade, and they'd go be a fisherman or a carpenter or whatever else. And so the people who were good at Hebrew school, and they learned, and they learned, and they learned, they went on, and they, they advanced, and, and they, they kind of graduated from that school. And guess what? At that point, at that point, um, if, if you made it out of Hebrew school, you could go and you could ask a rabbi if you could follow him. It was kind of a big deal. I love kung fu movies. Does anybody else like kung fu movies? I love them, okay? I love, I love that culture and that, that master-student relationship you see a lot of times in the kung fu movies. And, and, and I, there's one in particular I, I like. And, and, and when the student wants to learn from the master because he has awesome kung fu, right? They want to learn from that master, and in, in a certain culture, they'll go up before the master, and they'll bow on, on the ground, and they say, please accept me as, as your pupil. I want to learn your kung fu, because your kung fu is awesome. And the master can decide whether or not, and usually it's, it's based on in that culture whether or not they can pay. But in the time of Jesus, when it came to the rabbi, you'd go up to the rabbi and say, Rabbi, I want to study you, I want to follow you, I want to follow you. And the rabbi would quiz you. He would, he would see how much you knew and, and how well you knew it and how well you could talk about it. And he would quiz you and he would talk to you about it. And, and remember, this is the best of the best could only go and approach a rabbi. And, and if the rabbi was satisfied with your answer, he says, yes, I take you as my disciple. I'm going to be your rabbi. You're going to be my disciple. I'm going to learn from you. It's kind of like, you know, I take him as my Padawan learner, right? It's I'm going to take him. You're going to be my student and you're going to follow me and you're going to learn from me. But it wasn't just learning stuff. We've already kind of talked about that, right? It wasn't just learning information. 
When you followed a rabbi, you learned everything about them. You watched how they walked down the road. You walked how they ate, watched how they ate. You, you saw everything about them. See, a, a, a student following a rabbi, the idea was you would go and you would replace the rabbi. You would become that rabbi, that person. And that concept, that's where we get the word disciple today. To follow that rabbi. To become the, the, the master. To, to become the person that we're following out. So, why were these guys fishing? Why were these guys fishing? You know, we, we, we have the disciples in this scene, in this passage. We also have Jesus. Jesus was an, an awesome rabbi. In fact, in Mark chapter 1, we already see Jesus. He hangs out with John the Baptist. He gets baptized. He's led into the wilderness. He's tempted. He prevails. He's victorious. And then he calls his disciples. Excuse me, before he calls his disciples, he teaches in Galilee. Jesus is a guy who had a great reputation for being an awesome rabbi. Remember when he was 12 years old? He was saying things that amazed the teachers then. Jesus knew his stuff. Jesus could have followed any rabbi. He was a well-renowned rabbi. Jesus was awesome. Jesus was worth following. And it was uncommon, as we read about in this verse, for a rabbi to pursue people. Usually it was the other way around. Master, please accept me. I want to be your paddle one learner, right? It wasn't this way. So Jesus asked these guys if they could fall, if they could follow him. Um, they weren't the best of the best. They weren't Troy Bolton. <laughs> they weren't. They, they washed out of school. Maybe some of them never made it to secondary school. Maybe they did, but it was just too difficult. And they were asked to leave, and they started to trade. Uh, they started to be a, a fisherman. They, these guys that Jesus called, they were rejects. We, we often don't think of them that way. You know, they left their nets at once, and they followed him. But they're fishermen. They, 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 they washed out. They... They weren't good enough. They were rejects. They, they weren't good enough. It, has anyone ever heard of the game Dodgeball? You heard of that? Yes. Uh, some of the graduates today played that a little bit, right? You, you, played, some, you played some Dodgeball. Um, it'd kind of be like us, since I'm a Marvel guy, okay? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this. Yeah, I am. Go Marvel. It'd it kind of be like us choosing a, a volleyball team, excuse me, a dodgeball team, and our first round pick is pre-Super Soldier Serum Captain Steve Rogers, right? And he was like, I could do this all day. You know, that guy, all heart, but he was little and scrawny. It's like, it's like picking that, because really, if you're going to play dodgeball, if you're going to, you know, when you're a little kid, you know, everyone, we're going to pick teams, and you know, cool kids over here and unpopular kids over here. And I was always, all right, here we go. And I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get out first, be that guy. And, you know, when we pick teams, we, we look for that first-round draft pick, right? It's usually the quarterback, right? It's usually that guy or, 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 or you know, someone who's real athletic and they're real quick. And they, and what, what, oh, you know who would be a great first-round draft pick for a dodgeball team? My daughter played softball this year in high school, and it's an all. And you got any softball players in here? I knew you were there. In fact, I would want this girl from this video as a first round draft pick on my dodgeball team. Fellas, let's roll that video. Por favor. Watch this. Bam! <laughs> That's who I want on my dodgeball team. Awesome. J Jesus didn't pick the first round draft prospect. 
He didn't pick the person who, who could hurl the ball, right? He, he, didn't, he didn't pick that person. The, the, the person that he picked to follow was just an average person. In fact, they were probably a little maybe below average. <laughs> they, they weren't at the top of the class. You know, I think Jesus sends us a powerful message here. I think Jesus did this for a reason because, see, we like to place labels on people, don't we? Let's, let's just get real for a second. We just like to put labels on people. Oh, that's, that's the funny guy. That's the weird guy. You know, that's the popular guy. That's the guy with the good hair. I was never that guy. That's, um, <laughs> we put labels on people, right? We, we, we put labels on people and, 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 and we like, well, that, that guy's going to make it. That guy probably isn't. He, he's not going to do that. We, we, we put labels. It's like life is this big high school cafeteria and we all have our table. And, and I've been at, I was a band nerd in high school. I was at the band table. Yeah. Go band. Without us, your football games would be super boring. So you better thank us. All right. So go band. I was band president my junior year. I won the John Philip Sousa Award, y'all. So think about that. All right. So I've been at that table. I've, I've worn those dorky white marching shoes. All right? I know how to do it. I can rock the band, all right? I also sat at the football table. Football, right? Yes. I've been at that table. I, I've been at the, the sci-fi geeky table. I've been at that table before. Or what I like to call the table of future bosses. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Um, today I found myself at the middle-aged youth minister table. So. I'm 42 and... I'm still rocking it. So anyway, um, <laughs> Jesus doesn't care about the labels. He doesn't care about the labels that we put on other people. He doesn't care about the labels we put on ourselves. He doesn't care. J Jesus doesn't care how artistic or athletic or musical, or intellectual, or funny, or popular we are. He doesn't care. He, he doesn't care how many followers we have. You know what I'm talking about. He doesn't care how many likes a certain post gets. If I don't get 100, if I don't get 100 likes, oh, come on. He doesn't care about any of that. Jesus doesn't care. Jesus came up to those guys and he said, come and follow me. And they left their nets and they followed him. Jesus wants us to be responsive to his invitation. I, I think if you want to have a good relationship with someone, you respond to that person. You're responsive. Guys, don't be stupid and be a gentleman and be responsive to that young lady, okay? I married a cheerleader, so you should listen to me. All right? That's right. Jesus wants us to be responsive. So when he comes up to us and he says, Paul, I want you to follow me and I want you to walk in my footsteps. I want you to learn everything about me. I want you to become me. I want you to fulfill my mission here on earth. Paul, follow me. I want you to follow me. And so many times, even as a youth minister, I'm not responsive to that call. Uh, on the cruise last week, I, I, I learned and I was reminded how dependent I've become on my dinky little phone. I went through withdrawal for a couple days. I'll be honest with you. And that's just, that's just one thing. There's a lot of things that can get in the way, and it's, I, don't want to, I don't want to talk more about it. Jesus wants us to respond to that call, that invitation. 
Jesus took these guys who were rejects. They were no names. They washed out of Hebrew school. They didn't have it. He took these guys. And Jesus changed the world. Because they were simply responsive to his invitation to follow. It's not rocket science. Jesus says, follow my footsteps. And we either say yes or we say no. Jesus wants us to respond to his invitation. You know, as we, as we get ready to, to land the plane tonight, as we get ready to kind of wind up our time together, I, I want to share another verse because I think this is a very personal uh, invitation to all this. And it comes to us from Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse, starting with verse 28. And, and here it is. Come to me. This is Jesus speaking. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Uh, in this passage here, the word yoke is kind of an interesting word, and it's a, a word that's kind of fallen out of our daily vernacular because not a lot of us grow up on farms anymore. And, and back in the day, a lot of people did, and they understood what a yoke was. So a yoke had a couple of meanings. Uh, first of all, a yoke was a little wooden cross piece okay, that you'd, you'd lay across uh, like two oxen. <clears throat> you know, two oxen. <laughs> I don't know if they sound like that, but there you go. Um, <laughs> it lay across two oxen, and you would tether them together, and you could harness that power for a cart or whatever else. You, were, you needed moving, or maybe a plow, okay? You could harness, you could harness that energy. You could, you could harness that. A, a, a good, maybe a good equ equivalent modern day, I'm, I'm thinking is maybe like a, a dog leash. We, we kind of put it on there and we kind of maybe point the dog to where, to where it needs to go. Maybe that's a way to think about it in modern terms. So a yoke meant that. My yoke is easy. Uh, another way... People understood the word yoke to be used in that time. Was a Rabbi had a yoke. His way of seeing things and doing things was his yoke. And so when you chose to follow a rabbi, you chose to accept his yoke. You would follow him and you would do what he said. That was his, that was his yoke. And so Jesus said, my teachings, they're not a burden. They're not going to weigh you down. My, my, they provide rest and they provide comfort. See, during the times, the yoke of the other rabbis... It was strict, man. You had to jump through a lot of hoops. You had to do everything just right. You had to, there were a lot of hoops to jump through. Jesus, he turned everything upside down. He simplified things. He, he showed us what it meant to really seek God in our lives. And so he said, my, my burden is easy. My, my yoke is light that I'm inviting you to. Just follow me. You know, in our times, I think when, when we think about Jesus Becoming a Christian, some of us are like, man, that's not for me because all I see is a list of things I can't do anymore. I can't go where I want to go or where it's cool to go on Saturday night or whatever. It's so much more than that. It's not about just what we, about what we can't do. It's... It's not it. There's so much more, guys. All right, I'm going to ask a serious question. Who in here is a dog person? Okay, who in here is a cat person? All right, we'll pray for the cat people. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, it's okay. Cats are nice. All right. All right, I'm going to quote. Here's a quote from a modern philosopher uh, named Ron Swanson. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, here it is. Any dog under 50 pounds is a cat, and cats are pointless. So, there you go. <laughs> I am, I'm a dog guy, okay? I'm a dog guy. I'm allergic to cats. I like cats too, but they make my eyes red and puffy like I've been watching The Notebook. But do not woo The Notebook, sir. Hand me your man card. All right, so here's a picture of my, my big dog, Dez. 
This is Dez. I know you do. But listen, I'll bring, I'll bring him up here this week, uh, and you'll get to meet him. He's, he's awesome. He's a um, giant schnauzer chocolate lab mix. We rescued him a couple of Christmases ago, and I love... I, at first, it's, it's like one of those movies, you know, it's where the, the, the dad is all, oh, I hate that dog, and he's just going to tear stuff up, and it's going to cost all this money, like all your dads. Um, I, that was me. I, I was determined to hate that dog, but something happened. Something there was w- that wasn't there before, guys. It was the Beauty and the Beast thing. It was... <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I adore... I adore this dog. I, 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 I try to walk him every day because he's a big guy and he needs exercise. S- s- well, s- you could say the same thing about me. <laughs> he's, he's a big guy and he needs some exercise. And we do. We, we walk in the neighborhood. And we, you know, hey, 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 Doris, here we go. Hey, the cookies smell delicious in the neighborhood. And yeah, we're just out hanging around and it's, and it's awesome. And yeah, every night... I put on his, his collar, right? We talked about that, that yoke, kind of that, that element of control. I put this collar on him every night. I put that on. I, I get it. He goes crazy. I put it on him, um, and, we, and we head out. Now, I don't, I don't put this leash on my dog because I want to ruin his evening, right? I put this leash on my dog because I love him. Because if, if, it, were, if it was just Dez with, with un, untethered, I mean, he's literally like, squirrel, bam. And he would, that's him. That, that would be my dog, Desmond. That's, that's what he does. I don't put that collar on him to lessen his experience of life. In fact, I put that collar on him so, so I can lessen the chances of, of his demise or getting hurt because I love, I love that dog. So much. That, that collar, it, it keeps him safe. It keeps him on, on that path. I, I, I want to guide him. I want to protect him. I want to keep him to where he needs to be. And I, I don't want him to stray from that, from that path. Last week, we, we pulled into Belize on our cruise ship. And we, and we, we were going to go tubing through a cave in a national park in Belize. And it was awesome. We had to get in this little van and drive an hour. And, and that guide on that trip was my new best friend. You know what I'm talking about? He knew where he was going. I had no clue. He was our guide. I, anyone done wilderness trek before? Uh, backpacked in the mountains? Okay, you've had a guide. Back in the day, it was called wilderness trek. Wilderness trek. Uh, my, our guides, I had no idea. You know, it was like, oh, I'll go over here and eat these berries. Wrong, right? You don't do that. You listen to your guide. That they're there to keep you safe. When, when Jesus invites us to follow him and to accept his yoke, he's inviting us to a life of abundance. Do you understand that? I think on the surface we think, oh, this is all the stuff I can't do. This, I can't go here. I can't do this. I can't do that. We, we think about all the things that we can't do. Jesus is calling us to a life that's full. Well, being a Christian's boring and stuffy. You need to hang out with me for a little bit, dude. Because it's not. I laugh with my friends. I, I go to movies. I do stuff I want to do, and I enjoy life. It's not like I walk around with my top collar uh, all the time. I'm not. That's not us. I believe my life is so full, guys, because I follow or I attempt my, do my best to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. It's a life that's full and abundant, and that's the life he's calling us to. The world saying, you need to do X, Y, Z to have fun. You need to do X, Y, Z to fit in. You need to do all these things. But Jesus is calling to this, uh, uh, this abundant life. And yeah, we can't do everything we want to do. But guess what? That's how a child lives. Do you understand that? Just to act on pure impulse all the time? You know, on, on the cruise ship, it's like, ice cream for breakfast. Okay, you know, just instincts. That's how a child lives. Jesus is calling us 
to walk in his footsteps, to become him, to carry on his mission. And he says, I, I'm going to be your Lord and your master, and, and I'm going to love you, and I'm going to walk with you, and I'm going to be with you, and I want you to become me. <clears throat> I don't believe the yoke of Jesus Christ looks anything like an old-timey plow or even a dog collar today. When, when he's inviting us to, to accept his yoke, his teaching, his authority in our life, I don't think that's what it is. In, in fact, Thomas, we're about to land the plane. Come on out here real quick if he's out there. Thomas say that to everybody. I don't think the yoke of Jesus today looks anything like the plow, like, like the dog collar. This is what I think it looks like. <laughs> it's Jesus Christ offering you a life where he is walking there with you. That's what it is. I don't know where you are right now. Um, some of you, you're, you're thinking about, yeah, I'm really thinking about giving my life to Jesus and starting that journey. That's great. Even if you're just asking questions, ask those questions. Ask those questions. So, some of you, it, man, it's, it's close to time. You need to make a decision. You've heard that invitation. It's time to be responsive, right, in that relationship. Maybe for some of you, this year has been a tough year. And almost anything but Jesus has controlled your life. I don't know where you are. Jesus had invited, has invited you to follow. Jesus wants you to follow. 